Hey, good morning, everybody. Thanks for being here with us. I'm Katie Earl. I'm the coordinator of our University Express program, and we're here with Cynthia Swartz and Will Vogel from Roswell. Welcome, guys. We'll do our super quick intro and then we'll get into their presentation. We are recording and I'll try to post it on our website in the near future. We'll be communicating with you through the Q&A panel. So any questions and comments you have for Cynthia and Will, please put those in the Q&A panel. If you're new to us, it's located at the lower right hand side of your screen if you're on a computer. And if you're on a tablet or smartphone, touch that screen that brings up your control panel. You'll see a circle with three dots and there you'll find your Q&A. So we'll thank our sponsors, which is our Department of Senior Services, Blue Cross Blue Shield of Western New York, Celsius Orthopedics, and Wegmans for all their support. And Senior Services is 858-8526 if you ever need anything. All right, let's learn about our speakers. Ms. Schwartz began her career at Roswell in 1980 and has served in a number of capacities, including the executive assistant to the president and CEO, vice president for government affairs, and executive director of the Office of Corporate Projects and Strategic Initiatives. In her semi-retirement, she was recruited back to Roswell by the Alliance Foundation to assist with their community outreach initiatives. She's an active member of the Western New York community, serving as on the board of many agencies and organizations here. All right, now Will. Will Vogel is the art coordinator at Roswell, where he oversees a variety of arts and wellness programs for patients and caregivers. Originally from Long Island, he graduated from UB with a degree in American Studies. And prior to joining Roswell, he was the executive director of El Museo, which is a nonprofit arts organization in Buffalo. In addition to his work as an arts administrator, he's a photographer specializing in instant and lo-fi techniques. They're here with us. I'm going to mute myself, unmute them. Thank you, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be here. So, Will, are, are you? Sure. Would you like me to start? Yep. Yeah. So, so this morning we're going to talk a little bit about um, the arts and the art of healing um, here at Roswell Park and we're going to give you an overview of some of our art programs and we'll go on a little tour of our art collection, um, which is a very extensive collection as you'll see. So I'm just going to share our screen here. Um, give me one second. Okay, and we should be sharing the screen. Um, look our notes here. So, see, this wouldn't be happening this morning without Will's technical capability. <laughs> we would be all in panic mode. So, <laughs> so anyway, Cynthia is going to take it away for you, and then I'm going to jump in um, towards the end. So, so I'd like to give you just a um, brief introduction to um roswell and some of our programs because the fun stuff is when will gets co to control things will we have to use okay so just a quick overview of um roswell founded in 1898 by dr roswell park uh some people think that it's a park that the hospital is located in it's actually named after our founder uh we have around 3700 employees one of the largest employers in Western New York. Uh, we see about 280,000 outpatient visits each year. We carry nearly $100 million in research grants. Um, right now, we have a little over 44,000 patients who are under uh, active care at Roswell, and they come from 41 states and four foreign countries. And another piece that a lot of people don't know about Roswell is that we have a um, training program that ranges from high school students through postdoctoral fellows and clinical fellows, uh, education of the next generation of physicians and scientists is a really important role uh, that Roswell has assumed and carried for decades at this point. We're also rated number 14 in the country by US News and World Report out of more than 900 cancer centers nationally. So, a national reputation, um, and that draws both patients and students from around the world. We've had a long time um, commitment to the patient experience, uh, and that's from the moment you walk in the door to hopefully the day that you are declared uh, cured of cancer and get to ring the bell in the lobby and everything in between, because we know how important the psychosocial 
uh, aspects of treatment are for our cancer patients. This is a long haul for many people. Uh, with the opening of the new hospital in 1998, it was decided that we needed to upgrade our so-called art collection, which was basically a bunch of framed posters that got hung on a wall in a random fashion. Um, and we wanted something that was a, a high quality curated approach to art throughout the hospital. Jean Knox uh, stepped up to the plate. She was absolutely insistent that with the brand new building and its fabulous uh, atrium in the lobby that there has to be artwork to match it. Uh, so she developed what was the original first theme for Roswell, which was sunflowers. The, some of you may have been familiar with the benches and banners and uh, sculptures uh, around the, the lobby. Those were all Jean's design uh, and a gift from her, as well as her fabulous photos, which Will will talk about uh, in a few minutes. Um, and then, then, um, we took a look at art in a much broader perspective. So when we say art and art heals, we really look at everything that is sort of a cultural experience when you're at Roswell. Music, both choral and instrumental. We have a pediatric art program uh, that is staffed by an RN who's a certified nurse uh, uh, art therapist. There's the creative arts team, which uh, Will supervises. Uh, we have an art cart that goes to patient rooms so patients can choose the art that is in their room rather than simply have to accept what's hung on the wall. Uh, it's something that patients absolutely love. Um, we have hands-on activities. Obviously, that's been tricky during COVID, but we're beginning to bring those back again. And Will and his creative arts team have been very clever about being able to continue the program in a modified way during um, COVID. We have visiting artists and visiting musicians. Um, bedside activities, which will be starting up again. Uh, so this has been a, a, an approach that says everything that you see and hear and experience outside of the clinical realm makes a difference. Um, and I will show you shortly that we can improve that clinically. All of these programs are funded through donations to the Roswell uh, Park Alliance Foundation. These are not taken out of our general operating funds. And the community has been extraordinarily generous in helping to support these efforts. Um, and then we decided, you know, the next step is, is a whole wellness survivorship program. It wasn't too many years ago when a lot of physicians were, let me say, less than enthusiastic about what many of us now consider complementary medicine, not alternative, but complementary. So we now have a full wellness program as you can see, that touches everything from meditation to nutrition and spiritual care. It's become an important part of our overall arts and uh, healing arts program. So the art committee, the formal art committee was established under the leadership of Nancy Jewett in 2001. We decided that we needed to have a, you know, a larger group of people who would help us uh, jury donations or acquisitions make sure that we had a good range of subject matter, a uh, good range of media, a good range of artists. We try to focus on Western New York. There are a few out of area artists, but the vast majority of the collection are from the Western New York area. The committee is all volunteers and they're artists and gallery owners and docents at museums and art instructors. So they bring real expertise to the table as we're doing this. Uh, it is a learning process and we have learned that even though the committee may love a work, uh, a fine work done by a, a well-regarded artist, it may not always be well-received in the hospital. We have learned that colors and content um, makes a huge difference in patient reactions. And we've actually had to take some very nice works out of the collection because we're not a gallery, we're a hospital with a nice representation of art uh, and if it doesn't connect with our patients, then it simply doesn't go up on the wall. There's about 1800 works in the collection, including some sculptures that you see in the various parks uh, around the hospital. 
And then there are um, two programs that are quite new, and Will will go into more detail on them. One is the Community Art Gallery. We decided that we wanted to reserve some wall space to be able to show the works of artists who would not necessarily be purchased and brought into the collection. Uh, maybe they're with a community art organization. We've had a show from the Buffalo Arts uh, and Technology Center of the work their students have done. It's a wide range. And it's been fun to be able to introduce people to some local artists who are sort of below the radar for a lot of folks, but do some really interesting work. The Art Heals Gallery grew out of a clinical study that we did on uh, the impact of art on patient healing. Our chief of urology, Dr. Kirchen Guru, who is sort of his own force of life, uh, is passionate about art. He was quite convinced that art had a really positive effect on patients. But all the studies that have been done were retrospective surveys. So asking somebody three months later whether they enjoyed the art at, you know, institution ABC uh, really was not a way to gauge what the reaction was. So we created a, a gallery inside the, the hospital and partnered with the Albright Knox Art Gallery to do a clinical study. And that clinical study um, had 80 patients that were enrolled in a, a formal clinical trial, 40 uh, received no exposure to art um, post their major surgery, and 40 got to spend time in the art gallery. Um, this is a real-time questionnaire. So we had staff in the gallery who were doing um, certified questionnaires regarding pain, hope, anxiety, and well-being. Um, and what we learned is that while there was not a significant change in pain, there was a significant improvement in the decrease in anxiety, the increase in hopefulness, and a sense of well-being for those patients who got to spend some time in the gallery each day as they were recovering from major surgery. And this was accepted into a publication, a major research publication uh, this past year. So. It's turned out to be, we believe, the first time there was a formal clinical protocol trial to measure the impact of art on our patients. So I'm going to turn this over to Will, who's now going to do the really fun stuff and introduce you to some of the really nice works that we have in the collection. So um, before we before we get into the, the current state of the Art Hills Gallery and the collection, I'm going to just play this one minute walkthrough video for you um, to demonstrate sort of what type of work was in the collection or in, in the study and how the gallery is set up. Um, so none of the works that you're about to see are um, included in the Russell Pep collection. They were on loan from the Albright Knox. Um, but this will give you a really great sense of the space that I get to work in every day. I'm very privileged. So this is the, the front room. And you can see that they, the study had all different types of work, very colorful. Um, there's sculptural work, there's 2D work, um, drawings, uh, photographs. Um, so it was really a very dynamic survey of work. And then this is the back room, which I'll show you um, in the current state of the gallery. Um, pieces like this, we may not normally be able to have in the hospital just because they're very large, they're unframed. So there's some considerations that we'll talk about in a little bit that would prevent us from being able to get um, work of this type. Um, but for the study, it was very important to have a, a broad survey of work. And there was also a multimedia component. So now, um, the current exhibition in the Art Hills Gallery, which is our inaugural exhibition, it's called The Art of Seeing, The Power of Feeling. Um, and there are 21 original works by 12 local artists. And you can see here uh, three of those works. So this, this sh shot is um, the front room. So that first scene that you saw in that video. Um, and in the back, there is, and I'll get the laser pointer going here. So in the back here, um, this is a piece by Robert Lyle Flock. It's called uh, Port de Hussey Garden. Um, here, this piece is by Idris Wajed. And it's called, um, uh, oh, I'm blanking on it. 
It's called uh, the Smile. Uh, you made you made my, me smile again. I'm sorry about that. And then this is a piece by Mark Dellis. Um, this is a photograph. These are two more installation shots. So this is looking in from the front door, and then this is looking out into the other two rooms. Um, in the back of the first shot here, we have a piece by Dennis Bertram, and then that same piece by Robert Fla. And then in the back room, we've got a piece by Mohammed Zaman. Um, we've got Liz Tower, Yosef Bayus, and then in the back we have Victor Shanchuk Jr. Um, and again, we have uh, we have paintings here. We have a mixed media piece, and then these are photographs. And, and I must say that um, anybody who had seen this space before, our very talented in-house. Uh, design team took it over. It was a battered, <laughs> deserted, half storage, um, half informal office space. Uh, it, they just did a remarkable job in transforming it. So when you walk in the door, you just don't have a clue that you're inside a hospital. It's very, it's very quiet. It's very contemplative, and it's very appropriate for our town. It's, it's a very um, good resource to have in the hospital. For people. And every day when people come in. Wow, I, know, I can't believe that this is here. And this is patients, visitors, and staff. Um, so now I'll take you on a little tour of the collection. Um, so this piece, uh, when you come in through the Scott Fiedler Clinical Sciences Center, you uh, right now you can't do that, but um, <laughs> it's, it's employees only. But normally you'd be able to walk right in and go right up to the elevator and then go to your, your clinic. Um, so as you walk in, you see this piece. It's called Bush Field by Shasti Olier Sudan. And this is uh, over 30 pieces of powder coated laser cut steel. So they have this sort of bronze look, but they're actually um, powder coated steel. Um, and then they're laser cut. And then the cut pieces are, they sort of project out. So it's a multi dimensional sculpture. Um, it's inspired by the seeds of the dandelion. So the pieces flutter sort of as the currents of the wind, uh, currents of the building, the air in the building um, push everything around. Um, and they were very well received, and they're the inspiration for the new Roswell Park logo. Um, a few years ago, when Roswell Park became Roswell Park Comprehensive Cancer Center rather than Roswell Park Cancer Institute, um, there was a comprehensive rebranding, including a new logo, and that logo was designed by Shasti. And Shasti's relationship is that first she was a patient, and while she was going through chemotherapy, she began thinking about other ways to enhance the environment. We now have a very long-term relationship with Shasti. Um, you'll find that with a lot of the, the, the pieces in our collection, um, that they're made, the artists are former, are former patients or current patients yeah. in some cases. Um, and then sort of alluding to the next slide, in the back of this larger shot, there's a, a painting of some birch trees. That's a painting called Song for My Father by Rodney Taylor. Um, and Rodney is a very well-known um, local artist, and unfortunately, he passed away um, at the beginning of last year. Um, but we're very fortunate to have this work by him. Um, it's oil on canvas, and it's two panels. So this is not one large piece, it's two pieces. And um, there's a great backstory to this piece. It's a tribute to his father, Philip Taylor, who was the first African-American x-ray technician at Russell Park. Um, so this commission work uh, was made specifically for the lobby. And when he was asked to make the work, um, he sort of reflected on the time that he would come here um, and spend with his father. Um, they'd come, or he would come and, and meet his father for lunch, and they would see patients that were you know, back and forth, very stressed out. Cancer is a very um, stressful thing to have to deal with and live with. Um, so he wanted to create sort of a tranquil forest for people to immerse themselves in. And he was able to do that with these pieces. And you can't really see it here. There's a detail shot on the right, um, but there's a dimensionality to the work. Um, there's a texture to the paint. And when you walk right up to it, and one of the nice things about this being a hospital and not an art museum is that you can walk right up to the work. Of course, we ask that you don't touch it, but um, you can get a little closer to it and no one is gonna ask you to step away and you can really um, take in what it looks like. And if you were to do that with this piece, you'd see that the birch trees, um, they look like a peeling birch tree. Um, it's really remarkable. The other fun story with Rodney is that uh, when he was a kid, there would always be excess computer paper um, in the radiology department. And his father 
would take the, the paper from who knows what uh, and bring it home. So Rodney would have paper to work on as a little boy um, practicing his art. Probably illegal nowadays, but in those <laughs> days, it was okay to take the old paper. Um, when you're on the first floor um, near the cafeteria, um, you'll see a series of works, large scale photographs by Gene Knox. And these are some of the first pieces that we had um, formally in the collection. Um, uh, these uh, pieces document her life on the Knox estate, um, which is not East Aurora. I don't, it is in East Aurora. Okay. Um, and they're installed throughout the hospital. So this shot shows you looking down the hallway um, near the GI and thoracic clinics, which is outside the cafeteria. And again, these are these are large format photographs. Um, these aren't like digital prints. Like nowadays, you'd have your digital camera and you can just be like, oh, I'll make a GI photograph. This is a photographic enlargement. So this is a very intensive process. Um, and these images could probably not be recreated if you wanted to. Um, on the right is uh, a, an example um, in front of the GI clinic um, signage. So you can see just how big they are. They take up a lot of space. But it's nice when you're in this sort of windowless corridor to be able to look outside and peer through these, these evenly placed sort of windows um, into another world. Down the hall, or really around the corner from there, uh, we have a work by Leroy C. Johnson. Um, this is from his flower series. This is flowers number six. Um, so Leroy Johnson is a painter, um, lawyer. Uh, he is the manager for his, or was the manager for his brother, um, Rick James. Um, he describes his work as eclectic primitive. So he is not a formally trained painter. Um, he's a self-taught painter. Um, and so you, you see more experimentation with his work. Um, and he incorporates a lot of bright colors and surrealist visual motifs. Um, he's very strongly influenced by sort of African and Caribbean visual influences. Um, so this is one of his works. I think we have about six pieces. Um, there's also a piece on the, the very first floor when you come in near the phlebotomy clinic. Um, so if you're ever down there, um, you'll be able to see it there. When you go down that corridor that we just sort of explored um, into the Scott Buehler Clinical Sciences Center, um, you'll see a, another uh, series of large pieces, and this is another large format photograph um, by Peggy Jacobs. It's called A Wonderful Day, and this was taken on the Jacobs estate in East Aurora. Um, and I believe that this is a digital photograph. This was made uh, later um, than the, the series by Gene Knox, um, but it's so wonderful to be in this. It's kind of a cramped corridor. It's, it's very well designed, but it is a, it is a hallway. So to be able to look to your right, to your left, and feel like you're outside. Um, and really, you can see any season of the year there. So you can transport yourself to any time. Um, it, it really brightens up the space. Across the hallway from that um, is this very large painting by Hugh O'Neill. Um, this piece was donated in honor of Susan Zebro, who was the first chair of the art committee, uh, second, second. second chair of the art committee from 2007 to 2016. Um, and so this is an install, like I said, on that first floor connector hallway. Um, you do a 180 and it's right there. Um, and so this is more of a, of, a, of a fall scene. That's kind of the fall section. Um, and as you continue along, there are winter and spring scenes as well. And Hugh O'Neill was Susan's um, art teacher. So they had a, a close relationship. Uh, when Susan died, her family, specifically wanted to donate a piece by Hugh O'Neill in her memory. Yeah, we love seeing it every day. It's, it's, really, uh, it's really a nice piece. Um, outside from that hallway in the main atrium, um, we have a number of pieces by Rita Argan Alba, who is a, a noted uh, watercolorist. Um, and she has a series called the Buffalo Architectural Series. Now, the pieces that we have in the atrium are G clay prints. They're very high quality prints, um, but they're special because they're called remarks. Um, and you can see it on this detail on the right, um, they're a series of 50. And so the, the sort of telltale sign here that it's a, it's a print is this like perfectly straight line across the piece, right? But then we've got this drawing here, this pencil drawing, and that makes it sort of an original piece. And so this pencil drawing is a detail. This is the piece. 
and there's a little flag up here on the side and she sort of laid that out for us. So we have, um, I, I want to say 15 of these. And then on the next slide, I'll show you some of the originals. When you go into a darker area, um, we're able to keep the original watercolors there. And that's because um, when you have UV light from fluorescent lights from the sun, um, it can really impact the, the quality of the color of a piece of work, especially with watercolor. Watercolor is very susceptible to this. So we, we keep these three pieces and a few others from that series. And again, these are originals. Um, in a darker area where they won't have any um, UV light shining on them. Um, so these three pieces are in the Scott Beeler Clinical Sciences Center. And then the first piece on the left, uh, this is uh, uh, an image of the McKinley Monument in Niagara Square. This piece in the middle is the Our Lady of Victory Basilica in Lackawanna. And then of course, this is City Hall. So then um, uh, down on the ground floor, um, this is an installation by Josef uh, Bayus. So we have quite a few works by him in the collection, including in the Art Deals Gallery, as um, I, I showed you before. Um, he works primarily with found materials and materials that he makes. So I've seen him working with 10,035 millimeter slides in, a, in an installation. I've seen cut paper. Um, I've seen more traditional 2D work. Um, these four pieces, compositions one through four, um, are made of handmade cut paper, paint, and ink. So you can see in the detail on the right um, how many layers there are. This one piece has four different layers of paper and color. Um, and this piece is, like I said, on the ground floor between the hospital and the CSC. So when you come in, um, you are you just sort of make a right. And you go down the hallway into the other building, and then this piece is on your left. On the second floor of the CSC, um, in the mammography waiting room, um, we have this large installation by Joan Linder. It's called Remedy. Um, so this is a multi-part drawing. These are ink drawings that were then enlarged and printed on acrylic. Um, and then the pieces are mounted in front of a window so that you get this beautiful light shining through. Um, and Joan Linder, she's a UB professor. Um, she's also known for her public art installations uh, throughout the state. Um, and when we were taking these photographs not that long ago, she was telling me about her, her work in the New York City subway and um, in cooperation with the city of New York and some public schools. So this is a sort of daytime view looking out. And this is a composite photograph by Biff Heinrich. Some of you may be familiar with Biff Heinrich and his work. Um, we have some in our collection. Um, I won't be showing it to you. Uh, as part of this presentation. Um, but Biff is a well-known local architectural photographer, um, and he was also the former president of SIPA, which is the Center for Exploratory and Perceptual Arts here in Buffalo. So the next shot is looking in to the, to the CSC at night. Um, so these are backlit, uh, and you can see, um, again, all three pieces. Um, it's really nice to be able to sit out on the Marie Maria and Michael Bodner patient terrace um, and take these in. So the, the patient terrace um, is, a, is a nice little sort of enclave, alcove, I guess, on the, the second floor. Um, and it looks out over Carlton Street. Uh, patients can go up there uh, at any time and enjoy the weather. They can sit down and just get some fresh air. They can have their lunch. Um, sometimes staff are out there too. Um, and we have uh, some work out there as well. Uh, this is where our, our collection gets a little bit more eclectic. And before Will moves on, oh. the reason that those windows are called a remedy oh. is that each of those are traditional medicinal plants. That's right. Um, I forgot to mention that. Yeah. Thank you, Cynthia. Um, yeah, there's three types of medicinal plants. Um, and she she has a series of these drawings, um, but these three were, were commissioned specifically for this installation. Um, so again, looking uh, when we're out on the terrace, on the uh, MMMB terrace, um, there's also this sculptural installation. These are glass flowers by Kamal Prasad. Um, she, she's a sculptor and painter. Um, she works primarily in fused glass. So when she, she sculpts, you know, that's sort of easy to describe. But um, as a painter, you know, by taking these different colors of glass and fusing them together, you're able to create these sort of uh, controlled color fields. 
Um, and when you use multiple tiles and put them together, suddenly you have a, a composite beam. Um, so these four pieces, I, I, there's two of them here, and then two on the next slide um, are installed in the terrace. And really, you would never know that they weren't that they're 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 fake flowers. I mean, that they're sculptures. You, they're beautiful. And really, the the giveaway is when you're up there in the cold of winter, and you have these bright, beautiful, popping flower poppies. And I don't even know what kind of flowers these are. Daffodils, I guess. I don't, I'm not sure. Daffodils. Oh, <laughs> Will and I will have a landscape gardening class immediately after this presentation. Uh, well, we have two more here. I won't try and guess what they are, um, but we have two more flowers here um, or sets of flowers um, and they're very, very nice to look at. They really serve sort of right the day. And, and just as a sidebar, this space, which is on the roof of a building that connects the main hospital with the new clinical sciences center, um, was funded by a very generous gift uh, by a patient. And uh, not only did she fund the, the cost of developing the terrace initially, but there was a subsequent gift after she died, which will endow the maintenance of this space. So we're very fortunate. Coming back inside. Um, so we, we have a lot of work that I've shown you by very prominent local artists um, working in a variety of media, but we, you know, we want to support um, the whole arts so there's a, a local studio here called Starlight Studio, and their specialty is that they work um, with adults with sort of specific developmental needs. So they pair um, professional working artists with these students, and they have art classes, and then they have shows. So if you've ever been to the Allentown First Friday Gallery Walk um, here in the city, um, you can usually go to Starlight, and there'll be a show there, and there'll be It'll be uh, one of their book, their artists, and then the artists that they work with. So these two pieces are from a series that we have by Andy Calderon. Um, and I've actually seen a, a few exhibitions of his work at Starlight Studio. Um, and so these are installed in the CSC. Uh, he, he latches onto a theme and he runs with it, right? So he was very into food at one point. Um, and I actually saw the show that these two pieces were in. So there were his paintings of, of different arrangements of food, and then there were some more formal um, arrangements by uh, the artists that worked with him. Um, but these two pieces uh, are really, they're fun, they're really whimsical. Um, it, it brightens people to see them, you know? When you come and see something like this, like, oh, I want a, I want a milk dud, right? <laughs> like, how could you not want that? Or breakfast on, on, the, on the left there. Um, and we have some other work by Andy Calderon as well um, in other areas of the hospital, but I thought that these two would be sort of the most fun to show off. And this actually goes back to what we were talking about earlier, where sometimes you think you've got something wonderful and you have to rethink it. So these two pieces at one time were in a clinical space um, up in the chemotherapy area. And the patients complained about the fact that because they were frequently either very hungry or nauseous, that the pieces just were not pleasant for them. The rest of us love them, of course. So, so now they're in an area that, that everybody is more than happy to have this color and whimsy, but it's just the little things that you run into when you're trying to run a juried art program um, that is serving such a wide population. And the just as a side note, the committee that was selecting art for the new clinical sciences building were really taken with the artwork from the Starlight Studio. And I think we ended up purchasing 11 or 12. There's a, a number of pieces. It's actually, oh, I'm sorry. No, as, and it's a relationship, of course, we want to continue. It's just, it's the, the artists are special and we're delighted for people to see their work. Um, you can see those pieces in the same hallway as the Gene Knox pieces near um, the Thoracic Center and near the Russell Park Pharmacy. Um, they're on the other side of that hallway. Should definitely check them out because uh, I'll, I'll be honest a lot of people they 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 see the starlight studio installation and they don't realize that um there's a there's a, a sort of special need that brought this art about you know and then once you're able to read more about it because we have some context there um and information about starlight studio and about the artists um it, it's it's really eye-opening um, so then near the pediatric clinic 
Um, this is a, a sculptural sort of tile mosaic. There's actually two mosaics, but I'm only featuring one here by Annie Hoover. And they're installed in front of the uh, Gioia Pediatric Hematology and Oncology Center. Um, so these are made from cut, cut colored glass and they're sort of stacked in a way um, that you get this nice texture. Um, so there's details on the right side from the two different mosaics. You can see the girl um, pictured um, in the one here. And then on the other side of that, there's a wall here and a double door. And then on the other side of that um, is the, the mosaic where the detail from the bottom um, is from. Now this, this sort of illustrates a particular challenge that we have in a non-museum facility, um, which is with uh, lighting and con climate control and things like that. So we, we don't have the level of control over these things that you have at the Albright Knox. And the art is a tool that we use um, to help people feel better. Uh, but it's the, the point of the space is not to display art, it's to make people more healthy. So sometimes you run into situations like this where you have um, maybe not the best lighting. Like you can sort of see here that this is not even lit. Um, but when you're here in person, you know, it doesn't make for good photographs. But when you're in person, um, it, it still works very well. You get the nice shadow in the in the tile. You can see the texture and the dimensionality of the work. And you can really see um, the, the hand of the, uh, the artist um, that worked to design this. And of course, there's a backstory here. So the official name of the pediatric clinic is the Anne, Donna, and Catherine Joya Pediatric Hematology and Oncology Clinic. It takes a huge wall to get that name. <laughs> um, but this was done in honor of uh, Anne and Donna Joya, who founded the Alliance Foundation um, in 2000 uh, in honor of Anne's daughter, uh, Catherine, who died at the age of five uh, while under treatment here at Roswell. So this first mosaic was done specifically to um, honor the three of them. And the second mosaic uh, is a more general representation of our pediatric uh, cancer population. And then sort of, uh... Wrapping it up here as we go to some of the outer areas. Um, so this is this is called Science's Art. This is an installation um, on the connector bridge between the main hospital and some of our, our research facilities. So you can see here that there's um, some of these pillars um, that are wrapped. These are vinyl wrapped pillars. They're printed um, and they repeat going all the way down the hall and also behind the camera. Um, so all the images that are on these, uh, these prints were sourced from the cytometry department here at Roswell Park. So their, their job, um, I'm gonna distill it down far more basic than they would like you to. Um, they, they image cells, they take pictures of cells, they show us what cells look like, what we're made of, what cancer is made of. So that's part of what we're seeing here, right? Um, there are different, different cells, different cellular structures, parts of tumors, um, proteins. Uh, it's really fascinating. Um, so here are some, some details from that, right? So this is called, uh, the, the image that is it created this pillar is on the, the right here. And you can see this epigenetic deregulation of, I don't even know what that means, right? <laughs> but it makes a really cool image. So I read a little bit more about this. Um, each of these color sections, colored fields is the nucleus of a cell or the nucleus of a granulosa cell, which is, um, so it's like a reproductive egg. Um, the structures were cut into pieces and they were stained and it created this image that you see on the, the left here. And then our team sort of recreated that image um, in a more whimsical way to create this, this pattern that was then printed. Um, and then you'll see that again on the next slide. Um, these are the locations of chromosomes that are in, uh, that were sort of introduced to a, a tumor to suppress the growth of cancer, right? So these sort of green splotches are the, the genetic material. And then this is sort of how it floats around inside the nucleus. So these images on the right, these were the source images. And then those were repositioned and recreated by our, our graphic designers um, to create this image that's now on the pillar. 
Um, so it's really fascinating what you can do um, with the material that comes out of our, you know, our researchers here. Like, who would have thought that you'd be able to take pictures of cells? That these were probably originally black and white images, um, and then they were colored, and then or they no, were colored yeah. with chemicals. They were stained. They were stained. Yeah. Okay, so they're stained cells. Um, but who who would think that you'd be able to create a, a graphic like this? Um, and then we'll take you outside here. So um, this sculpture is called Pathways to Hope. Um, it's a stainless steel sculpture by Ellen Steinfeld. And it was dedicated in 2017 in what is now the Kathleen and Joseph Curtillo Pathways Park um, at the corner of Carlton and Ellicott Streets. So the picture on the left is from the dedication ceremony in 2017. Um, and it gives you sort of a, a nice overview of what how everything looks. You can see, um, you can see it, it has this sort of pathway form with these riders on it, and that's because this was created uh, to celebrate the ride for Roswell. Um, so we have, of course, the bicycle figure. We have the pathway. We have. Uh, I have the wrong image here, but it actually makes the letter R, and it makes a P, and there's even an O at the bottom, which Symbolizes not just the wheel and a bicycle, but sort of the continuity of life. Um, the O in the Hope logo for the or the the Ride for Roswell logo, um, which there, there's a whole backstory to that. Um, and then, so like I said, this is from the 2017 dedication, and then the picture on the right is from 2021. And you can see that there's some more plantings. Um, there's more trees. There's a sort of more formal park area and some architectural lighting. And that's thanks to the generosity of Kathleen and Joseph Curatolo, who made a, a sizable contribution um, to support the park and really turn it into officially a Pathways Park um, where we can celebrate uh, the riders. And then here is a detail of one of those riders. Um, and I just think that's such a cool, cool shape. Um, and so you may be wondering, you know, Ellen Steinfeld, Ellen's very well known um, at Roswell Park because she created a, a very large sculpture called Hope that was um, featured in our main lobby for about 20 years. Um, that sculpture is currently under rehabilitation. Otherwise, I, I probably would have featured it here. Um, it's going to be uh, repainted and then reinstalled in Kaminsky Park. Um, we're not sure of the timeline, but uh, we're hoping this soon. We're hoping this fall. Um, so again, here's our, our rider. Um, and you know, it is Ride for Roswell time. So if you're interested, <laughs> Maybe it was kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, that's our tour of um of uh, of the art collection at Roswell Park. So if we did this every week for I don't know <laughs> the next three years, we might get through all eighteen hundred uh, pieces in the collection. Uh, one of the things that uh, we didn't mention is that. These works, first of all, are either donated or have been uh, purchased through generous donations to the art program. And um, they are specifically designed for public areas. We do not purchase work, for instance, for individual offices. Um, we do not purchase works uh, that are sort of unrelated to Western New York and the overall mission. As I say, we have a few works that are for artists outside the region, but we are a regional institution. There's a lot of talent here in Western New York, and uh, we want to support the Western New York art community. And I think as you can see from this really, you know, brief overview of a few of the highlights, that there's a huge amount of talent um, here in Western New York, and we want to support it. Wonderful. Well, thank you both for that presentation. That was fantastic. Thank you. Of course. So I'm seeing a couple questions here, and now that you have stopped sharing, your Q and A's on the right side. If you wanted to check too, I'm I'm not sure if you're seeing these, so I can go ahead and read them to you if you want. Sir, we don't see any of them. So okay. All right. So they just came to me. So this person's wondering, can people from the community come in and look at the art collections or do you have to be a patient? No, no, the community is, is more than welcome. Obviously right now with COVID restrictions, um, we're, we're not encouraging people who aren't patients to come into the building. But when this passes, <laughs> um, people are welcome to come into the public spaces on 
the first three floors of the main hospital and on the first um, really three floors of the clinical sciences building. Um, and as you know, it's an extensive collection. So we hope people can have an opportunity to enjoy it. And there's sculptures outdoors as well. Awesome, thank you. This next question is, who did you say picks the works of art and how do you decide when to switch them out? There is an art committee, they have terms of service. So actually, good question. We are just in the process right now of identifying um, new people to join the art committee, replacing folks who have fulfilled their term of service. Uh, we have, of course, shifted from what we were doing five, six years ago, which was major acquisitions for the new clinical sciences center, as, as well as completing the works in the main hospital building. Um, so we're into sort of a, a different mode with our art committee. And therefore, I think we're going to um, probably be putting fewer galleryists on the committee and more people who um, sort of work directly with art maintenance, um, developing new programs around the art. Uh, frankly, despite all of our wall space with 2 million square feet of space, we are pretty well filled up in, in terms of public spaces. Um, and as we are changing clinics and expanding places, of course, we lose some wall space. So I think we're going to be much less acquisition and more programming and maintenance going forward. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you for that. This next person's wondering, do you offer classes as part of the wellness program? Art classes, sorry. Do you offer art classes as part of the wellness programs? We have not to date, but I know there have been discussions about wanting to add to it. Um, the nature of our patient population, the comings and goings, the fact that when people are here, uh, they're physically receiving treatment. It just makes that um, offered, but it is something that the art committee has wanted to do for a long time. And I think as our wellness program continues to expand, we'll be looking at the opportunity for some interactions with the artists that are in the collection. And our, our creative arts team, although not a sort of formal art education program, um, there is a sort of an educational component to that. So there's a, a right now because of COVID, um, there are some restrictions on what our rest, our staff artists are able to actually do with patients. Um, but we do offer art making materials and sort of guided instruction um, for patients, uh, families, caregivers who are interested. Um, so that's something that anybody that's at Roswell Park is able to take advantage of. That's wonderful. Thank you, Will. Next, we have a comment. All of these works are beautiful. And then this comment, Will, I am so impressed by your knowledge. How long did it take you to learn all of that background? <laughs> I'm still learning. I learn a little bit every day. I learned a little bit at this presentation, actually. So, um, I, again, it's it, there are spaces in this facility that um, I still haven't been able to get into because of the safety restrictions um, and because, you know, we need to put that type of stuff first. The art is complementary. So um, as I get to explore more of the spaces and as I'm called upon for various items, whether it's moving a piece or you know, somebody would like something changed out, um, I'm always learning something new. I'm sure we're all learning and Cynthia, your knowledge base is enormous as well. It's really wonderful. I just have a few more years in service than Will does. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I'm, I'm 41 years. Will is one. one. <laughs> Makes sense. Uh, this last thing that I'm seeing is when it's not COVID, are there art tours? Um, we are actually. I don't want to get ahead of myself, but we are working on a tour program. Um, but there's a number of safety approvals that we have to go through. Um, so we're really just at the first step. But we do have a walking guide That's that true. has been developed. Um, and it's one of the other frustrations because, of course, patients and services first. So just as we get the walking guide done, a wall comes down, uh, you know, a door closes. Um, 
but it is now available so the patients when they're here, especially if they have time on their hands in between clinical visits or a family member is waiting for them, there is a self-guided tour of the major public spaces to introduce folks to the art. And that's available um, in printed form in limited areas around the hospital. But if you come here and you log on to our guest Wi-Fi, um, there's a pop-up when you sign into that. And at the bottom of the pop-up, the list of, of links that pops up is a link to that tour. And it's about 40 pages. So if you have a lot of time to, to spare here while you're waiting for your appointment. Um, no, no, people are not waiting for their appointment, <laughs> but their loved ones may be waiting. Well, yes, that's what I think. <laughs> See, that's why I'm in here for a year. She knows just what to say. <laughs> It's a good mix. I love your dynamic. Okay, wow. So that's that's really wonderful though. If you have that time, whoever's taking that time can can wander around. Okay. Well, and it's done by building. So it's not like you're going to the Albright Art Gallery and have to do the entire structure. Mm -hmm. If you're in the Clinical Sciences Center, there's a section of the guide that's just the Clinical Sciences Center. So you can compartmentalize. You don't have to do the whole tour. Okay, mm -hmm. that makes sense. Let's see, I'm just seeing now, like, thank you for telling us about this. I had no idea. Uh, Will, are you guys seeing anything that came through? I don't want to miss um, anything. No, we actually don't have any questions on the q and okay. They're just privately to me then, that's fine. So before we close here, is there anything else you want us to know about the artwork or anything that you're excited about or doing? Oh dear, there's there's a lot on the horizon. Yeah. yeah. Um, that, you know, the COVID restrictions as they ease are giving us a chance to talk about expansion of both the art program itself and um, as well as introducing some new ideas and services. Um, I'm hoping within the next year that a lot of that will be behind us and people will be reading about, learning about some new art related programs uh, at Roswell. So maybe we'll get to meet you on a tour. Yes, exactly. We do have docents who are anxious to be able to do tours. We just can't encourage that right now, but hopefully soon that's something that can be done. Yes, it'll be worth the wait, I'm sure. All right, well, thank you both for being on and everyone who's on, thank you and enjoy the rest of your day. Great, thank, thank you. you so much. It's been a pleasure, thank you.